Hi everyone, today let's talk about the Palantir CEO and what he said about AI. Then we'll talk about why June belongs to the small caps. Then we'll get into the economic data, especially with the Fed meeting coming up on the 14th. Then we'll get into the charts. Then we'll look at my results for the week and my thoughts going into the Monday session. If you like trading stocks and options and making money, definitely like and subscribe. I make videos like this every single day that the markets are open as well as Sundays, so make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Welcome to the Portfolio Bulletin. Let's get started. So Alex Karp came out and commented on the AI race and basically said that these companies want to delay AI because they don't have any usable products and that language models are not the key to AI and that using AI on the battlefield is the most important. If you're not familiar with Palantir, they do have a lot of contracts with the government as well as the Department of Defense, and that is the primary use of their technology. He goes on to mention the open letter, talking about all these influential people that want to slow the use of AI, and he's saying that these companies just want to slow down the overall use of AI so that they can develop their own products, and touting the fact that Palantir has an actual useful product that does utilize AI. He said that there's an AI arms race and that the single most important event is not language models, but actually uses in military applications, basically saying that we need to continue to develop AI as fast as we can because Russia and China will continue to do the same. And if we fall behind them, that will put us at an extreme disadvantage. Moving over to this article about the small caps saying, forget Nvidia, forget Apple, focus on the small caps. They say the S&P 600 fell by 2% in May while the Nasdaq surged nearly 8%, basically saying that the Nasdaq is overpriced and that we need to focus on companies that are in the S&P 600. We've been talking about this on the channel for a while, saying that breadth is improving, giving these small caps the potential to start catching up, whereas the mega caps are generally overpriced in my opinion. They say with the debt ceiling done and AI media fading, we're seeing gains in those smaller caps, while the mega caps are starting to slow down, and then they mention here, tech is 27% of the S&Ps, whereas financials and industrials are only 13 and 9% respectively. If you expand to the S&P 600, financials and industrials make up 34%, whereas tech makes up only 14%. Moving over to the AAII sentiment survey. This was published just a few days ago, and you can see we got the highest bullish reading that we've seen over the last year, marking the end of the week on the 7th. And this is honestly a pretty high bullish reading. I thought it would be a little bit lower, maybe in that 35 range. But most people are neutral to bullish, which is what I have been for quite a while on this channel. But as we start to hit these extreme prices, which is definitely interesting, as we hit these extreme prices, that could be an indicator that we're getting to one of those overbought type readings where we see a little bit more significant sell-off. Certainly doesn't have to happen, and timing is everything, but it is worth noting how much bullishness is in the markets, but there's still a lot of hedging going on on the S&Ps. Moving over to the Fear and Greed Index. I do want to highlight this because we did just hit Extreme Greed for the first time in a while. You can see that previous close, Extreme Greed. We had been in greed, which doesn't mean a whole lot. You can stay in greed for a while. The markets are typically bullish. But when you hit extreme greed, it is worth noting. You can see we're basically in extreme greed across most of their indicators here. Market momentum, extreme greed, RSI, only greed, breadth. I'm not sure if I agree with this one. I think breadth is fairly reasonable and actually building and can go higher. Put call ratio. Maybe for the overall markets, we're in extreme greed, but we talked about max pain where there's still a lot of bearishness with a lot of puts. Market volatility, definitely neutral on a historical basis. In terms of safe haven demand, I think this is a little bit misleading. Bond yields are a little bit higher than they've been in a long time, and people are starting to soak up those bonds. I don't know necessarily that we're in extreme greed. I would expect yields to be lower if we were in extreme greed. But looking at junk bond versus investment grade yield, this is definitely interesting. Junk bond and investment grade have been in the same range or pretty close range for a while. And I think this is because we're expecting rates to go lower. So junk is already pricing that in, whereas investment grade needs to go lower as we start to see those rate cuts. So junk would stay in the same range and then investment grade would move lower, giving you a better spread between the two once we start to get those cuts next year. Moving over to the economic calendar, this is the big one. We have core CPI. We have core and headline CPI at 8.30 on Tuesday. And then the very next day, we have the FOMC meeting with the Fed still expected to pause. 
You also get PPI that morning. It's probably too late to factor that into their decision, but it is interesting. And then on Thursday, we have core retail sales, as well as headline retail sales, plus initial jobless claims, which continue to go a little bit higher each time. And then looking at Friday, we have Michigan consumer expectations, Fed Waller speaking, and that's pretty much it to close out the week. So a huge week of economic data, CPI, and the FOMC this week. Moving over to Max Payne for the Friday expiration, you can see this is a huge week for options, 5.3 million, quite a lot. Put call ratio, 1.9, still very high. Look at all these puts in the market. But it's worth noting here that Max Payne is down at 411. So puts and calls here, pretty solid at 420. 410, nice little spike here. Makes sense, we would finish between 410 and 415 here on the SPY. Highest call strike is that 420 strike. Highest put strike, 400. Makes sense, somewhere in here, maybe 406 to 409. Potentially a little bit higher between 411 and 414. In that zone is what I'm expecting, which is a substantial move lower from current prices. So definitely keep this in mind as we move into this week of trading. Moving over to the charts, starting off with the S&Ps here on the weekly chart. I want to highlight that major trend resistance is still sitting up at 43.75. We still have bullish momentum and bullish RSI on the weekly chart. But you can see here we're kind of in this consolidation of trend lines. Still bullish, but definitely hitting some major resistance. And you can see what that looks like here on the daily chart. You can see we're hitting that resistance here on this medium term trend line. We have the wick or the doji, whatever you want to call it. Momentum starting to fade. RSI still bullish on the daily chart. We have a little bit higher resistance up at that 434.50 level. And then major horizontal resistance sitting up at 439.98. Certainly could see an overthrow of those levels. If we get into that max pain area, 411, you can see that would be right in the middle of this previous consolidation. That would also take out the 55 day moving average. And that would really reverse the trend, at least in the short term. So that would be a very interesting development. Doesn't mean we couldn't go higher, similar to what we saw here in February, where we had a pretty substantial pullback into this previous zone and then a continuation rally. But a couple of factors here, upper levels of resistance continuing to rally, momentum fading on the daily chart, but interesting level at max pain with the FOMC and CPI coming up this week. Moving over to the weekly chart on the NASDAQ, you can see that Doji basically flat on the week down minus 0.4%, minus 0.04%. Momentum still bullish, RSI still very overbought. Volume actually picked up here today, which is interesting. Volume actually picked up this week, which is interesting, especially on a week where we didn't see any movement. Watching 353.24 or 359.98 on the weekly. This rally has been so steep that it's not really setting up any trends. We're very disconnected from all the EMAs and SMAs. And usually when that happens, you can see here, just like we got in January and February, eventually we'll pull back into those zones. And it does seem possible that that's going to happen over the next week or two. But we're just not seeing major signs of that yet until we get a more significant down move, potentially off of this doji candle next week. Moving over to the daily chart, you can see that big red bar that we had on Wednesday. We do have some decent tops in this 357.50 area. Looks like we're setting up for a little bit of a potential pullback. Momentum definitely fading. RSI below the SMA. We had pretty big volume on that down day. And all of the green days have been pretty minimal in terms of volume. Volume picked up on the last day of the week on that doji candle so it does seem possible that we set up for a little bit lower move over the next week again paying attention to the fact that we have so many puts in the market hedging for cpi as well as the fomc moving over to the russell here on the weekly chart you can see momentum building huge volume this week big push into these previous resistance areas did find a little bit of weakness there. I still think we're going to hit 189 and potentially push back up to 195.50. We're above all the EMAs and SMAs except for that 144 EMA on the weekly, which is sitting up at 197.11. Certainly could push back into that zone, but we're above all the shorter term trend lines. And this definitely looks like a very solid base setting up for a nice rally into these previous highs. 
Moving over to the daily chart, definitely a little bit less rosy. We talked about resistance in this area. We gapped into here and then found weakness. If we see a little bit of a pullback, find some support down around 179.17 or the 9 EMA here on the daily chart sitting at around 181. Certainly possible. Fill that gap that we had into the zone. Just a little bit of negative momentum. Daily momentum did step down, so maybe we fill this out and then get the continuation rally does seem like this is going to go higher, but might be a little bit overbought in the short term. Moving over to the Dow, you can see we continue to set up higher lows. Again, we're above all the EMAs and SMAs here on the Dow. Looks like a rally, looking to push back up into these previous highs around 343.23. We're just above that 339 level, so the next one is that 334, which is about a percent and a half higher from where we are now. Definitely very attainable. This kind of looks like a flag setup. Rally, flag, rally, pushing back into these previous highs up around 347.67. Momentum, definitely bullish. RSI looks quite nice. I'd really like to see volume start to ramp a little bit here on the Dow, but overall everything looks good. Moving over to the daily chart, similar thesis above all the EMAs and SMAs, definitely bullish. You can see that flag in a little bit better detail, definitely a breakout. You want to see it take out these previous highs just to confirm the rally, but it seems like we're going to get that over the next week or two. Moving over to the equal weighted S&Ps, you can see we got another bullish week. Momentum is building, RSI also building, volume stepping up, looks nice. It seems to be catching up to the S&Ps, up around 149.82, potentially pushing back into this January, February level. That would be very nice here on the equal weighted, but it does look a little bit less disconnected here than it did over the past couple of weeks. You can see that week of 22 May, you can see where the equal weighted S&Ps were continuing this downtrend as the regular S&Ps were uptrending. But now we're moving in the same direction and it does look more consistent with what we had been seeing over the past several months. Moving over to copper divided by gold, you can see copper finding a little bit of a base. We've had three weeks of somewhat bullish price action, momentum building, RSI still bearish below that 50 line, but looking to cross the SMA and potentially head higher. We're retesting the 9 EMA, looking at VWAP, just a couple of points higher. Really want to see this start to rally a little bit and catch up to the regular S&Ps. Similar thesis here, they usually come together at some point in the future. And if copper divided by gold is continuing to downtrend or we see another breakdown on this downtrend, that would be quite bearish in my opinion. I want to see this break into this previous consolidation and start to establish higher highs and push back into this highest traded zone and catch up with the regular S&Ps to confirm this rally. Otherwise, we might end up seeing something like we saw here in November and December of 21, where S&Ps were rallying, copper and gold were flat, they came back together and that started the trigger for that bigger down move from June all the way into July. So again, looking for these to come together. Lastly here for comparisons, we have the dollar. You can see that low for the S&Ps was the peak here on the dollar in October of 21. And since then, the dollar has moved lower and it's now kind of consolidating in this area. It's looked a little bit more bullish than it has recently. We saw the dollar and the S&Ps rallying at the same time. Generally not what you see. You can see in this previous window, S&Ps going higher, dollar going lower. A little bit of chop in this one. We saw them kind of move down together a little bit, but as the dollar started to see bigger weakness, we saw the S&P starting to rally. So in my opinion, one of these needs to switch. If the S&Ps are going to continue to rally, I want to see the dollar start to weaken a little bit more. We've been talking about this potentially being a bull flag set up on the shorter time frame. And if it breaks out of this bull flag and we start to see the dollar really take off, potentially pushing above my 105.50 level up to this previous trend resistance up around 107. I think that would be a pretty big trigger for the S&Ps to start breaking down and seeing the dollar start to rally once again. Moving over to the ratio, starting with the S&Ps divided by the M2 money supply. At this point, it seems like we're going to push up to this 21.22 level. We've broken well above the 20.50 level. 
I did add this trend line, which I think is fairly interesting. Potentially see a push up into that zone, overthrow horizontal resistance, taking out this March high as a potential level. If we get that overthrow, bigger pullback into the 9 EMA or potentially trend support down here around this 2020 level. After we get that bigger overthrow, certainly possible. But in the short term, momentum and RSI are still bullish. We're not overbought quite yet. And everything looks pretty good here on the S&Ps divided by the M2 money supply. Moving over to NASDAQ divided by SPY and SPY divided by Russell. You can see NASDAQ pulling back versus the SPY and the SPY pulling back against the Russell. Russell definitely showed some strength this week. Momentum ticking lower, our side ticking lower. Seems like we could pull back a little bit further here. Finally getting those smaller caps to start to outperform at least a little bit and get back into a more normalized range. We had this very long flag type setup, big rally out of that zone, and it does seem like we're kind of complete here now after getting these couple legs down on the weekly chart. And I would expect this to continue at least down to this 220 level and the 55 EMA, which is right behind that level. Moving over to Apple on the weekly chart, you can see we are right at all time highs going back to December of 21. We did take out that high, making new highs all the way up to 184.95 as the new wick high. We're still below resistance at 182.37. And I do want to highlight here that we are overbought on the weekly. We've talked about that before on the channel. Momentum definitely starting to fade. In terms of major trends, we could absolutely see a huge push up to around that 198, 200 level. That would be very interesting. That is where the longer term trends are taking us. If you look at these longer term trends, you can see those are the levels that are potentially in play here for that next trend resistance. But at this point, you have to respect the fact that we wicked those highs. We found a little bit of weakness. Volume did pick up. This ramping volume into a little bit of weakness is generally not what you want to see. Still a very bullish trend. And I do want to highlight here, you can see area of highest volume sitting down around that 150 area. So a lot of people are making a lot of money, potentially looking to start exiting these positions at all time highs. Again, everything is still very bullish, but something to keep in mind. Moving over to Tesla here on the weekly chart, you can see momentum, very bullish, RSI, very bullish, momentum building, volume stepping up largely, looks like we're going to get the gap fill up to 264.68, that would be very nice, you can see those levels here, get that gap fill, potentially push up to those highs around 302, certainly possible, but this is definitely getting a little bit disconnected, we'll probably get overbought conditions over the next week or two. I don't think we'll get a stall before that happens, but just look at this ramp. Looks very, very nice and looks like it's going to continue into next week. Moving over to Microsoft and Google, you can see both of these here on the weekly chart are looking a little bit weaker than they have recently. Microsoft had its first red week in about a month and it looks to be pulling back potentially down to the nine week moving average. At 312.47, I do have a level here at 315. Get a nice potential overthrow back into this more normalized range. You can see we've been on a huge run and it's been very aggressive, but we're starting to see some signs of weakening, momentum stepping down, bearish volume, step up in volume as well. Google also had two red weeks in a row through a huge wick through those highs. And it looks like we're gonna be pulling back into that nine EMA as well down around 116 momentum also pulling back volume stepping up in term on back to back bearish weeks indicating we could see a little bit of follow through from these AI stocks that have been on a crazy run moving over to consumer staples and consumer discretionary on the weekly chart staples still continuing to find some support at that 7250 level the longer term trend is still bullish but momentum in the short term still bearish RSI definitely bearish you want to see this stabilize at least a little bit more. Maybe we even see a breakdown like this where we get a, just a little bit of a retrace to that 74 level and then a re-dip back down to that 7058 level. Certainly possible. But at this point, it does seem like we're finding a base in this same region and could absolutely set up a higher low and rally. On the week, still bearish and you have to respect this downtrend. Looking at consumer staples, still looks like a rocket ship. This is being driven mostly by Tesla pushing up to that 166.78 level, as well as the 144 sitting at 163.95. Moving over to oil, gas, utilities, financials, and healthcare. I just wanted to highlight on this chart how basically all of these sectors are starting to bottom, and that's why we're seeing a little bit of a rally in things that are not tech. 
So oil and gas, double bottom, we've been talking about that for a while, looks good. Utilities, finding a base at this previous low, starting to rally a little bit. Financials, also finding a higher low at the 200 SMA on the weekly chart, starting to rally a little bit. Two consecutive weeks of bullishness. And then healthcare, it looks the least bullish of them, but it is finding support at the 144 EMA, had a nice bullish candle, and you'd be expecting at least some follow through potentially up to that 133.59 level. So all of these sectors starting to show a little bit of a base and a little bit of bullishness. And finally, things outside of tech are finding some bullishness. Moving over to oil here, I don't typically hit oil, but I think it's fairly interesting. I've been watching XOP for a bit, and it seems to be basing. And oil is also basing right at this 200-week moving average, sitting at 67.22. We've wicked that level multiple times, and it seems very solid. We are at some downtrend lines, and this is still technically bearish. We're below all the EMAs and SMAs besides the 200 SMA. So still technically rolling over, and if this level breaks, that would be a pretty substantial down move in my opinion before we hit some decent support levels. So overall, watching this level as potential support, it continues to hold, and you would want to see it hold and push back into this 75 to 80 range, absolutely possible. But if this breaks down, it could be a pretty good short, so critical level here on oil. Moving over to stocks above their 50 and 200 day averages on the weekly chart. You can see the 50 day average rally back into this zone last week, two weeks ago, and then this week we had a slight push up to that 200 SMA right at the highs here from mid-April. And really if this rally is going to continue, you want to see this push back up into that 77 or 92 range. 92 typically is your topping point. We've seen that a couple of times here. But pushing up into the 70s would be a little bit more healthy and we could see a little bit more follow through. Similarly here on the 200 day average, we hit that 21 EMA looking for that push up to 58.90. And if we are going to be topping out, you'd want to see this push back up to that 76 area. Momentum on both of these moving towards bullish. RSI both look good. And overall, this looks like we're going to get into some higher ranges on both charts. Looking at yields here just for a moment, we talked about it in the Friday video. Two-year yield continues to rally here. I wonder if this is just because of demand currently being a little bit higher than normal. The Treasury was short on funds because of the debt ceiling and they're sucking up liquidity a little bit faster. And people know that they're going to need money. And maybe that's driving people to look for a little bit higher yields. We're still looking at a pause at the next Fed meeting, but I'll keep an eye on this one. Moving over to J&K and TLT, you can see J&K looks more bullish. We've been talking about this for a while. Still need to get above that 55-week moving average. The 9 and the 21 have consolidated. And VWAP is also consolidated in this zone. We're actually above VWAP already. We want to get above these shorter-term EMAs. And then that midterm one at the 55 sitting at 92.12, really getting above 92.50 would be great. And then we could start to see a little bit more bullish price action And there's plenty of room between that 55 and the 144 and 200 on the weekly chart. So if we can get above this and start to rally, that would be nice. Momentum, slightly bullish. RSI, moving towards bullish, but not there yet. And then looking at TLT, we've been chopping in this zone for a while. We are kind of at the bottom of this range that we've touched twice. And maybe we see a little bit of a rally back into this mid-range or upper range. Certainly possible. Volume stepped up on this last week. And we did throw a wick to the downside and start to rally a little bit. So overall neutral, but at a support area that could provide at least some rally. Moving over to the VIX, you can see we're at 13.84, basically in the range we saw through 2018 and 2019. So there's no reason that we have to really spike up or anything. We could hold in the zone for many weeks in a row. Absolutely possible. You can see there were a couple of wicks to the upside here and there, but nothing major like we saw during that COVID spike or even the moves that we saw over the last two years or so. Definitely worth paying attention to getting back into these ranges. You can see that spike that we had at the 2018 dip, which was fairly substantial, but did subside fairly quickly. Either way here, we're still downtrending. Momentum and RSI are both bearish on the VIX. And if we were to tap that 11.77 range, which was the low from these previous ranges, that would be fairly interesting and something worth paying attention to. But even as we come into that range, there's nothing saying that we have to spike up as soon as we get there. As you can see, there were multiple weeks we hung out in that same range, if not a little bit lower. Moving over to my accounts here, you can see nothing really has changed. I did get assigned those shares, so I have some IWM shares now and some QQQ shares. I expected that to happen, and we talked about it in the Friday video, so I have some covered calls. 
on both of these ETFs now. I still have a put on the IWM, so still bullish here. On the queues, I'm a little bit more neutral with those covered calls, and I am trying to collect a little bit more cash flow on the queues. Nice little $230 on that position, and we're pretty close to support right around that 353.20 level. So if it breaks down, I will definitely be looking to put on more bearish positions, as we are still a little bit extended in my mind. Let me know down in the comment section what you think of this small cap rally. Is it going to continue, or is this just a short-term outburst? Definitely like and subscribe if you got any value out of this video and make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. I continue to add different types of content to hopefully help you with your trading decisions. Of course, none of this is financial advice. This is all for entertainment purposes. Good luck in your trading and have a great day.